Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll explain you Wayne Bridge Oscillator using Operational Amplifier in complete details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll be explaining you basics of oscillator. After that, I'll explain you circuit diagram of Wayne Bridge Oscillator using Operational Amplifier. And with this circuit diagram, first of all, I'll explain you working of it. After that, at last, I'll be going to derive feedback calculation for Wayne Bridge Oscillator. And based on feedback calculation, you can understand complete design process of Wayne Bridge Oscillator. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of oscillator. Oscillators are used to generate sinusoidal waveform. Let me explain you how. See, oscillators can generate low frequencies up to few hundreds of kilohertz. Using positive feedback, oscillator generates sinusoidal waveforms. Here, if you have basic block diagram of oscillator, then in which we have two components. One is amplifier and second is feedback. Amplifier is having gain A and feedback is having gain beta. For oscillation, there are two criteria that you need to understand. See, criteria number one states that gain multiplication A into beta that has to be one and overall phase shift because of A and beta that has to be zero or 360 degree. When you talk about Wayne's bridge oscillator, at that time with amplifier, we have zero degree phase shift and with feedback, we have zero degree phase shift. So in total phase shift because of amplifier and feedback is zero degree. And here we will be designing Wayne bridge oscillator in such a way that this amplifier's gain into beta, that gain will be unity over here. So let us see first circuit diagram of Wayne's bridge oscillator. Now I'll explain you circuit of Wayne's bridge oscillator. Here you can observe we have Wayne's bridge and this circuit that I have simplified in this form. So first of all, I'll explain you circuit. After that, I'll explain working of this circuit. So here, if you observe, this is Wayne's bridge that I have simplified in this circuit. Let us try to understand how connection is there. See, with inverting terminal, R3 is connected over here and that is given in feedback here. So here, with inverting terminal, R3 is connected here and it is given in feedback over here. If you observe with inverting terminal, R4 is connected and that is connected with ground. So inverting terminal is having R4 connected with ground like this. Now with non-inverting terminal, if you observe, see here in parallel C2 and R2 is connected and that is connected with ground. So with non-inverting terminal, C2 and R2 that is connected in parallel and that is connected in ground. And with non-inverting terminal, C1 and R1 is connected in series and that is given in feedback over here. So with non-inverting terminal, C1 and R1 that is connected in series and that is connected over here. So that is how, first of all, you can simplify this Wayne's bridge circuit in this simplified one. The reason is based on this circuit, it is easier to have calculation of everything. Now, as I have told you with oscillator, we are having major two components. One is amplifier and second is feedback. So here you can observe this is amplifier and this is feedback. If you observe this amplifier, then this is amplifier as per it is working with non-inverting configuration with negative feedback. So here this amplifier A that is having how much gain? 1 plus RF by R1. Here RF is R3 and R1 is R4. So amplifier's gain that is 1 plus R3 by R4. And as it is working with non-inverting configuration, here we have zero phase difference. So this amplifier that is having gain 1 plus R3 by R4 and it is having zero phase shift. If you observe here, we have feedback. So with this feedback, we have C1 R1 connection in series and C2 R2 connection in parallel. So this C1 R1 connection in series that is acting like a high pass filter 
and C2R2 connection in parallel that is acting like a low pass filter. But at one frequency, you will be observing there is a resonance and as per the resonance, there will be oscillation over here. So how oscillation is happening that even I'll explain you. But first of all, you need to understand, see this feedback that is having gain beta. And as per the resonance, there is oscillation here, right? So here with feedback, we have zero phase difference. So here, see phase shift because of amplifier and feedback that is zero plus zero means zero. So that is satisfying this second condition. Now, first condition is what A into beta that has to be unity. So gain of amplifier that I have explained that is one plus R3 by R4, but gain of feedback that we need to calculate from this circuit and multiplication of A into beta that has to be unity. Here, there are a few basic things that you need to understand first. See, with this feedback circuit, if C1 is equals to C2 and R1 is equals to R2, in that case, this feedback gain that will be 1 by 3. So here feedback gain that will be 1 by 3 in case of C1 is equals to C2 and R1 is equals to R2. At that time, as per the condition A beta is equals to unity, A should be equals to 3 over here, right? And during this condition, you will be observing frequency over here that is 1 divided by 2 pi RC where R is R1 is equals to R2 and C is C1 is equals to C2. Now, if you have second condition in which if C1 is not equals to C2 and R1 is not equals to R2, in that case, this beta that we need to calculate from the circuit and at that time, this resonance frequency that will be F is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi square root of R1, R2, C1, C2. This is also I'll be going to derive in this video itself. So now let us derive all the formulas which I have explained you right now. To understand feedback gain calculation, first of all, you need to see how feedback is there. If you observe, see here we have output terminal that is given in feedback via C1, R1 series. So here, we have output terminal that is given via C1 R1 series and here we have feedback voltage with which C2 R2 is there in parallel. So here we have feedback voltage in which C2 R2 that is there in parallel. Now we need to understand how feedback calculation is there. So what is feedback gain? See here one should know feedback gain is beta and that is feedback voltage divided by output voltage. So here VFB divided by V out that we need to calculate over here. Now that calculation is quite simple. You just need to understand few things only. If you observe, see here we have C1 R1 connection that is there in series. Let us say it is having impedance Z1 and if you observe here we have C2 R2 connection that is there in parallel, let us assume that impedance is Z2, right? So first of all, what I'll be doing is, I'll be noting this Z1 value, see Z1 is R1 plus XC1 series combination and what is Z2? Z2 is R2 parallel xc2 means r2 xc2 divided by r2 plus xc2 right now feedback calculation is quite simple see here feedback voltage vfb that will be as per potential divider rule where input is v out so v out into this impedance that is z2 divided by addition of these two impedance that is z1 plus z2. Now we need to substitute this z1 and z2 over here. Now we need to take r2 plus xc2 lcm over here so that it will get cancelled from here. So here you will be getting v out 
into in numerator we will be having r2 into xa2 and in denominator we need to cross multiply this over here so we'll be having r1 r2 plus x1 x2 plus r1 x2 plus x1 r2 plus we have this coefficient that is r2 x2 right that is how we can simplify this now over here one should know what is impedance x1 and x2 see x1 is what x1 that is impedance of capacitance so that is minus j divided by omega c1 and x2 that is impedance of capacitance c2 that is minus j divided by omega c2 we just need to substitute that over here so here r2 into x2 is there so you can say minus j r2 divided by omega c2 is there with us this divided by r1 r2 plus x1 x2 that is minus j whole square so that is minus minus plus j square is minus right so here x1 x2 is minus divided by omega square c1 c2 and then we have r1 x2 that is minus j r1 divided by omega c2 then we have r2 x1 that is minus j r2 divided by omega c1 then we have r2 x2 that is minus j r2 divided by omega c2 right now with this we need to simplify equation further so in that see here we don't have any imaginary component in feedback right so if you want to cancel out imaginary component then first of all you need to take imaginary component common from denominator so what i'll be doing is i'll be taking j common from this in denominator so if you take minus j common from here then in bracket over here we will be having r1 by omega c2 plus r2 by omega c1 plus r2 divided by omega c2 right now see as i have told you over here we don't have any imaginary component so in numerator we have minus j in denominator over here we have minus j so this will get cancelled only if this much portion is zero so here imaginary component should not be there at output side so this much component that has to be zero so based on this you can say omega square that is equals to 1 divided by r1 r2 c1 c2 so based on that you can have frequency that is 1 divided by 2 pi square root of r1 r2 c1 c2 right so that is what the frequency which i have earlier told you this is the frequency which is there for oscillation with wales bridge right i have explained that earlier you see this is the frequency that is there for wayne's bridge oscillation right even if c1 is not equals to c2 and r1 is not equals to r2 but obviously if both are equal then in square root r square and c square will be there that will make it to rc so i'm not going to show it to you over here if r1 is equals to r2 and c1 is equals to c2 that you can directly understand right now here we want to understand feedback gain that is vfb by v out so we need to see this much component right so here still we need to observe vfb divided by v out that is beta and that is this imaginary components only so minus j that is getting cancelled from numerator and denominator so we'll be having r2 divided by omega c2 this divided by this much term that is r1 divided by omega c2 plus r2 divided by omega c1 plus r2 divided by omega c2 now from here you can clearly observe one thing see this omega is getting cancelled so we will be having r2 by c2 divided by 
R1 by C2 plus R2 by C1 plus R2 by C2, right? So this is what feedback gain over here with us. Now I have told you, see basic condition is what? Basic condition for oscillation that is A beta that is equals to unity, right? So here if A beta that is equals to unity, in that case, you can say A is equals to 1 divided by beta, right? Now what is A? A that we have calculated earlier. Here A is 1 plus R3 by R4 or non-inverting configuration negative feedback, right? So A is 1 plus R3 by R4 and 1 by beta that we need to have here. So 1 by beta means reciprocal of this, right? So that will be R1 by C2 plus R2 by C1 plus R2 by C2 this divided by R2 by C2. Now see if you divide R2 by C2 with these three terms then you can have further simplification. Let me explain you that. See here what we will be having C2 is getting cancelled and with this we will be having R1 by R2 plus here we will be having cal cancellation of R2, C2 will go in numerator. So we will be having C2 by C1 and this R2 by C2 that is getting cancelled. So here we will be having 1. So this one and this one that is getting cancelled. So we will be having R3 by R4 that is equals to R1 by R2 plus C2 by C1. So this is the basic condition for oscillation with Wayne's bridge. One more thing that I have told you earlier, see if C1 is equals to C2, if C1 is equals to C2 and R1 is equals to R2 at a time beta is equals to 1 by 3, right? So here, see beta that will be 1 by 3 if R1 is equals to R2 and C1 is equals to C2. So this is getting cancelled from denominator and 1 by 3 will be there, right? So that is happening as per this basic equations. So as then when you design Wayne bridge oscillator at that time, you will have to see this condition first. If this condition is happening with circuit, then only there can be oscillation. Otherwise oscillation is not possible. Once this condition is getting satisfied, after that you will have to see how components can be placed, right? So as if in circuit values are given, then first of all check this condition. If values are not given, then but obviously we will be considering R1 is equals to R2 and C1 is equals to C2 and based on that we will be going to identify unknown quantities as per this equation, right? And we will be placing that in this circuit. But if in circuit values are given, in that case you will have to see whether this condition is getting satisfied or not, then only oscillation is possible. So that is how one can design Wayne bridge oscillator. I hope you have understood this. Still, if anything that you would like to share, please note it down in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.